I've been using the Moser R5 bundle for four months now. Let's look at the good and the bad. I bought this bundle from GT Amiga here in the UK. Whilst this video is not sponsored or gifted, I am now an affiliate of GT Amiga. You can find links in the description. You can also use the code MS5 for 5% off any GT Amiga branded products. Unfortunately, it doesn't apply to the Moser R5 bundle, but it's still a great place to shop and their service is excellent. Here's a quick montage, but I'm going to mostly skip over what you've seen in everyone else's videos. The build quality is great and the initial unboxing experience is very nice. Now let's talk about strength. Force feedback strength. The Moser R5, aptly named, has 5.5 newton meters of peak output. Compared to the Logitech G29, that at around 2.2, and the Thrustmaster T300 is around 4. This seems quite good, but when you compare it to the Moser R21, for example, with 21 newton meters, it sounds like nothing. I was struggling to understand before I bought it if this would make it a quarter as good, and the answer is no. The reason for that is to do with clipping. The majority of time while you're driving around, you experience relatively low forces, so even two newton meters will probably give you a reasonable sense of what's going on with the tyres on the road. The problem comes when you hit something big and hard. If you've got a hugely powerful wheelbase, your output might look like this. You can see it hits a peak of 21 newton meters as we hit the kerb. If we've only got a small wheelbase with, say, 4 newton meters, the previous corner still feels the same, but when we hit the kerb, the output is clipped so it doesn't feel as exaggerated. To be honest, anyone driving around with 15 to 20 newton meters must be really scared of crashing just because it's going to rip their arm off. In sim racing, you know the old saying, you can always spend an extra 100 pounds, 100 dollars, 100 euros. For me, the reason I've got the R5 is because it's all included in one package. In the bundle, you get the wheel, you get the wheelbase, you get the pedals, and you get a desk mount as well. The reason that was helpful for me is because I didn't want to spend my time worrying about each individual component because as I was looking at that I kept adding on just a slightly better set of pedals, just a slightly better wheel. Before you know it you're spending so much more money. While the R5 is certainly not cheap compared to the Logitech or a Thrustmaster equivalent, I do feel the build quality and the upgrade path is a lot better with this. To me it doesn't feel like a toy um, and that's the reason why I chose it. I feel like it's a really good entry level setup for me to get going in the hobby um, and I don't feel like I'm going to have to upgrade anything straight away. Just to get out of the way, this certainly isn't cheap. At £500, if you don't have that money lying around, definitely don't feel that you need to start with this. It's better to get racing with what you have or what you can afford than to try to save up uh, just to buy the R5 bundle. Let's talk about the build quality. Funnily enough, the reason I've started this YouTube channel because I initially took some videos which I uploaded to Moser support because my first wheelbase had a, a loose USB mount. The support team looked at it, said that it was faulty and I got a replacement sent out to me straight away. But if it wasn't for that, I don't think I'd have this channel because hundreds of people watch my short. It goes to show that so many people are interested in this and that's because the, the value you get for the price is amazing. Since getting my second wheelbase, I've had absolutely no problem. Um, I'll talk about the software in a minute but in terms of hardware, absolutely rock solid. It's a joy to use. You can see the quality of the buttons as I press them is extremely firm and tactile. And I really like the gear shifters. It feels so nice to click. The lever effect material feels really great to use. Um, it's held up really, really well so far. Even the stitching's completely perfect. Got no problems with it at all. Here's a quick look at the software. The Pit House software gets updated pretty much every time I start it. It's great because things are improving, but it doesn't look like everybody's been so lucky online. The default settings for different games, I've not really deviated from them much. As I mentioned earlier, once you understand the clipping, you can dial in the force feedback to where you want it and you're pretty much good to go. I do like having the default settings because as I change between ACC and F1 for example, I don't have to remember what I set. One thing I've helped a few people with online is that LEDs don't work out of the box. You might have your display brightness set to zero, if you don't have the app full screen, you might not even see this slider. So go into the settings and make sure your LED brightness is turned to max.
You can update all of the firmware from one place, and this has been really smooth for me, I've not had any issues, touch wood. All the supported games are listed on the right hand side. My favourite games are Assetto Corso Competizione and then the older Assetto Corso with mods. When I first got the bundle I'd occasionally find problems where the wheel wasn't recognised and the game would need to restart, or restart the whole computer. But after these countless software updates I haven't had any problems in the last two or three months. Let's talk about console compatibility. Some people have seen my previous video and have had a lot of comments asking about it. Mozza really shouldn't have said that there might be compatibility in the future, I feel like that wouldn't fly if they were an English or American company. I think because they're a Chinese company they've got away with it a little bit more than they should have. Their development is improving all the time but you shouldn't lie about what the product can do and anyone who's looking for console compatibility should avoid Moza products for now. Whilst you can use an adapter like the Resolution 2, it's not natively supported and what I've read online is the feedback just isn't there. Whilst you will still get tactile response on your steering from the tyres, you won't get any road effects and you won't get any useful feedback from the car. In terms of people saying that it works well with console, I find that hard to understand when their reviews online are so mixed. I don't know whether people are paid or sponsored for the ones who've said that it's good or they just want to get a video for people to watch. Um, I personally don't own the Resolution 2 at the moment, but I might buy it in the future and obviously my opinion is just subjective as well at this point, but I would be very cautious if you're looking at this for console compatibility specifically. Um, it's worked out well for me because if I had console compatibility I almost certainly would have bought a PSVR 2 by now um, and that would have been another big cost that I'm looking to avoid. Yes, it's that time of the video, let's talk about the pedals. What you'll find is you won't have any brake consistency because if the pedal is so light I can understand why Mazda decided to do it this way, because most people buying the bundle aren't going to have a full rig to mount this pedals to. For me, I was initially using a kitchen chair at my desk. And at this point, Mazda have got a solution. You can buy the performance upgrade kit, which is very easy to install and adds much more resistance. There is, however, one new problem. Now your pedals won't stay still. You need something to mount them to. At this point, you're going to start researching rigs and different wheel stand options. I've got some other videos on that topic, so I'm not going to go into it here, but thanks to GT Amiga, my links and discount code are in the description. And this is my word of caution. If you start sim racing, you're going to want to upgrade. You're going to want to buy more. And you're going to get into the hobby more and more. And that's the unfortunate reality. The Moser R5 bundle is absolutely more than good enough for most sim racers. But when you're spending that much money, you think, could I spend a tiny bit more and get something a little bit better? and I don't think that will ever go away. Overall, I'm extremely happy with the R5 bundle and I'm really glad I got it. And now you're hooked. You're addicted to the action and you're looking at what to upgrade next. First of all, you might be looking at the fancy wheels they have, the FSR wheel, particularly looks nice. You might upgrade your pedals and get some load tail pedals, at which point the wheelbase is what's gonna be holding you back. So you're looking at upgrading your wheelbase. At this point, you've replaced the whole bundle and you think, should I have spent more to begin with? In the short amount of time since I've had this, we've had the V2 wheels come out, so all of those are now compatible with the R5 base. The software is getting constantly updated. Every day almost, there's a new release waiting to be downloaded. And there's more and more accessories, including the gear shifter and the handbrake. Sim racing is such an addictive hobby because there's always tiny little tweaks you can make either on track or in your rig. So I wouldn't get bogged down too much on what you should get to start with or if this is the perfect upgrade. It's amazing for what it is and you'll almost certainly find ways to improve it in the future. If you enjoyed this video, you might want to check out my previous video where I built this sim rig and installed the Moza hardware. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you racing.